Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of All the Worlds of Wonder by Melia McClure. This is a book from Radiant Press from 2023. It is a literary fiction. Yes, something I don't review as often on this channel, but uh, it sounded really interesting to me. I received this book from the publisher in exchange for a fair review, and she signed it, so thank you very much. <laughs> A shifting and vulnerable novel that features competing unreliable narrators, All the Worlds of Wonder is a literary fiction about love, loss, and self-preservation. As you know if you follow my channel, I like the odd literary fiction here and there, and this one was interesting because it was both a literary fiction and a sort of surreal comment on the nature of creativity. As a writer myself, albeit not of literary fiction, I mean honestly I wish, I understand the idea within the story of your characters not taking you over. Sometimes when I write, the characters make the decisions. Obviously I understand that it's some sort of subconscious coming together in my brain, but when I'm writing it feels like I'm channeling someone else and spewing their thoughts and actions on paper. I identify with that aspect of this book because in that regard that's kind of what the book is about, but in this book it, the playwright is literally becoming her characters. You learn quite quickly she suffers from dissociative identity disorder, you know, what used to be called split person. Personality. Yet the novel isn't about dealing with this as a diagnosis. The playwright isn't overly concerned with whether what she experiences, you know, essentially blacking out and living as someone else, is a mental disorder or her literally being taken over by the ghost of someone who wants their stories told. It's about the stories themselves. She doesn't really care why this is happening. And we have three characters here. We have the playwright's lost love, one of her muses, Maxine, a young and up-and-coming actress from the 20s, and then the playwright's psychologist. The book took me a good 50 pages to really get into it. This could be because the playwright and Maxine have the same pretentious, you know, oh, I'm an artiste kind of tone. In fact, it sometimes was hard to tell them apart, as aside from Maxine's 20s slang, which was well balanced, you know, it wasn't so full of it, it felt like a caricature, their style was the same. I'm rarely fond of the kind of like holier than thou because I'm a writer narrative voice as I find it rather pretentious. <laughs> if it had been just one of them with this, it would have been perfectly fine. But having both of them have a similar style, especially at the start, was kind of too much. Yet, yet, I'm saying as the story went on, I did end up liking both of them. It, it, it's like they peter out of that after a while, which was really good. Maxine is the funniest of the trio and her story when she's sharing her journals making it a, a historical fiction was really interesting and the playwright's story definitely grew on me as well. I loved her love story actually though I wish the ending had unraveled in a different way as it seemed we got a revelation before the sorrow which made the sorrow less hard hitting at least that's how it felt to me. Now there was one voice I did not like at all and quite frankly kind of skimmed near the end and that was the doctor. I didn't like him from the first instance which soured him for me the entire time making me unable to care about what happened in his story the ending of which was not surprising. Had the novel just been the playwright and Maxine I think I would have loved it but the doctor's part felt almost like an unwanted intrusion. Of course this is just my personal reaction some people might really like his segments I just was like I just didn't like him and I was just like I don't want to read about this man. <laughs> there were also a few things about the story that might work really well for people that just didn't mesh with me. The first being the theater. I'm not a theater person. I don't even enjoy going to live shows. I don't even really like musicals, you know, the odd live action and Disney movies aside. <laughs> As such, that aspect I didn't connect with at all. I also don't understand why they drank champagne all the time. Do people still say hot take? If they do, then I'm going to say it. Champagne is disgusting. I mean, I don't like wine at all, any kind of variety. I had to wine. Actually, I don't mind ice wine. I like ice wine a little bit. But I'm more of a beer and cocktail kind of person. You know, a dark and stormy is my favorite, followed with any kind of mule. I do like a good Manhattan and a whiskey sour and a martini once in a while. I also love me a Bellini or a legit pina colada, you know, one without the mix. And I love, love, love margaritas. <laughs> I don't like scotch, but my go-to on a Friday night is like, you know, a rum and Sailor Jerry or a gin and tonic. For beers, I'm not really into IPAs or sours, and, but I am into craft beer. <laughs> I really have to be desperate to drink generic stuff like Canadian or Bud or Coors, like, bleh, might as well just drink water. But, you know, I love ambers and box and wheats and stouts. <laughs> uh... My drinking aside, it just took me a bit to connect with the characters, but around the halfway mark I grew far more invested in the story and began to really enjoy it. It's one of those books that while I was reading I wasn't like in love with it, but upon reflection it really is a well-crafted novel that plays with the concept we've all seen before, you know, the dissociative disorder, but in a way that felt unique and it was definitely different. 
The book also reads quite quickly because interspersed with the chapters are a few pages written as a play. This helped move things along and explain how the story is tied together. The writing was occasionally funny. It might be more funny to actual theater people or those who find like pretentiousness funny. And the emotional moments were palpable and direct. Unlike some books where thinking about it makes me like a book less, this one is the opposite, as the more I think about it, the more I really liked it. And uh, yeah, so thank you again to the publishers for the free copy. And I, I it's a really pretty cover. Look how sparkly it is. Uh, anyway, yeah, so if you have an interest in, in what I just talked about or uh, in literary fiction, you should totally check it out. So thanks. <laughs>